Hey, Composite Gloves here, and this is the 12th video in the Harmer from the Ground Up tutorial series. And today we're going to be talking about da 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 uh, filters. So if you haven't looked it up yet, go look up basic filter movements if you're not familiar with filters like at all, because I'm going to just assume you know a few things. So go look up basic filter movements. Um, I think it's basic filters. Look up basic filters on my YouTube channel. A video will pop up. And it talks all about basic filters, low pass, high pass, terms, things like that. And so go look that up so that you are on the same page as I am. So now that you've watched that, uh, you know what a frequency cutoff is. So you already know what this knob is. And you should already be familiar with high pass, low pass, band pass, all that stuff. Um, I, I even covered some of this in the EQ2 video. So if this isn't quite doing it for you, go look at the EQ2. And now that's basic filter stuff. There's like all these other variables that go into it. But um, these bottom, so what's the difference between classic and crude? Well, classic and crude effect, uh, well, let's just play a few notes. So uh, we're going to use low passes. So see how sharp this is? This is a much sharper dB per octave cutoff. If you don't what that mean, don't know what that means, I'm going to keep it simple because um, I've been, this is like the second time I've done this video because I keep getting caught up in technical jargon that I think is just not helpful for the beginner. So... Uh, if you're more interested in filters, I'll probably do some more advanced ones later. But anyways, basically, it's a much sharper cutoff. It happens a lot quicker, and the effect is a lot more dramatic. Um, classic is not so dramatic. So as you can see, there's quite a bit more blur here, and it happens less fast. So this is a very in a non-technical way of saying this, but... Uh, for the beginner that's how i understood it when i got started so that's what those do and so that's the difference between classic and crude and you should already know what the filter you should already know what the filter shapes do i'm talking kind of fast because i want to get through the filter section it's kind of a big section so we have our hill leg low hybrid what the junk are all these crazy things here we have phaser these are all just special filter shapes that combine basic filter shapes to create more interesting shapes i believe at the end of that video the basic filter one, I give an example of a more complicated filter. So this is like a low pass combined with some other uh, snake. So I'm assuming maybe a band pass or a band stop or something. And look at that. There it is. It's And there's the low pass. Whoa, fancy that. I just like totally guessed it. And you see it behaves differently. So these are custom filters that they have personally scripted in, I'm assuming. Because um, we could create our own shapes, but these are a bit more unique in that when you script it in, you can control a lot more details. Um, like you can control how it reacts in the higher end versus the lower end on a particular band. And you can just do all sorts of gnarly things because this is Harmer and it lets you do additive stuff. But uh, if to give you a quick visual, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, we could create a low pass filter. So we could have a uh, low pass. And so this is a low pass filter and we could have some sort of weird peaking filter over here. And as we move it, this one could move around too. And this could create um, various shapes. And it could change the way our filter is interpreted. And so that's what they're doing with these um, hybrid ones. Just so you know. Let's turn that off so it doesn't affect nothing. Then uh, you'll notice that we have a width knob. I'm going to cover the this second one here in, in a little bit. So we have a width knob. What is that? Well, this also has to do with the dB cutoff per octave. But again, that's like technical jargon that you might get lost in. <clears throat> So we're going to talk about it uh, not so technical. Basically, if you have it all the way down, it will cut your signal very quickly. The cutoff is like even crisper than before. So if we go to our look classic, so this is, the, you see how crisp that is? And on our crude, it's even like more crisp. So I know these are like buzzwords, but I, like, I hope you're getting what I'm saying. Then with width all the way turned up, it will take much longer for our filter to happen. It's got a much larger Q, um, a little much larger bandwidth. So as we turn it on, our filter shape will sort of be impressed on it. Like if you're doing clay, um, a low width would be as your clay is spinning around and you're shaping it, you're just shoving your thumb into that clay and just making really jagged changes where the width up is like you're applying your whole thumb it's a gentle smooth pressure it's much more broad so you see as you can see here it fades in and out much more nicely versus this so that that can really change your sound it depends on what you want to do so we have keyboard tracking here and what keyboard tracking does is it connects 
to so it'll take all right for reals what keyboard tracking does is when you hit key it'll take that data and it will offset the frequency of your filter so far from your when you're hitting your key so if you didn't get that i have a whole video on keyboard tracking in massive and the same techniques apply so go watch the keyboard tracking in massive video uh, but Harmony is cool because you can keyboard track negative or positive 200 or 200 percent either direction so um let's let's set up a basic so we have our low pass and we have it being applied right keyboard tracking has been moved negative 200 percent so what does this mean so let's say our cutoff is right here negative 200 percent would move our filter cutoff um down way like 200 percent so whatever 200 percent is i can't state that but anyways it goes down then uh, if we were to hit a higher note it would move our cutoff up a little bit but it would still be offset 200 percent down but it's saying oh i'm hitting a key like let's say this is the first key and so the filter would be down like let's say at the very bottom but if i hit a key like slightly above that one like up here the filter would move up just a little bit so it's moving our filter position but because our low pass because it's a low pass it's completely wiping out our signal right now now we can move it to the middle and you see it still completely removes our signal because that's what this low pass is doing. However, now we can move it up. We can move the uh, cutoff filter up. And as we hit higher notes, it'll move the filter higher up. It'll follow our movement. And look at that. You can hear it now even though our filter's all the way on. So, and it's letting the fundamental, the note we're hitting, it's moving it according to wherever that is. And so you can use this to maybe let parts through without using an EQ that will, uh, it, sometimes you're making sounds and you really want particular, like you want your high end to come through where well, you can use keyboard tracking to fix some of that. And you'll see keyboard tracking, uh, like on the phaser, it's a common control. Most synthesizers have it again, massive has some pretty extensive keyboard tracking options. If you're interested in learning more about that. So that's our width, that's our keyboard tracking. So then we have this envelope control and this is supposed to control the modulation amount. And to me, that means it's supposed to like work with certain filters, but it's not working, at least to what I think it would do. And so if anyone figures it out, let me know uh, in the comments. So I'm sorry, I don't have a specific control for that, but yeah, so, and it's something I've obviously, I like hardly ever, well, I never use, otherwise I probably I would know what it does. So. Anyways, I do touch these other controls quite a bit though. So we have some envelopes here that are useful. We have our filter one frequency. Uh, so this is an envelope that turns our filter on and off uh, quickly. So we can have our filter be applied. So if we turn our filter on, we have it. So this is turning off. So our, when our filter is off, this will turn our filter, you know, the other direction. So it'll turn it up. So we can hear it being applied. If we have it on and we bring it down, so our filter comes on and then it applies itself. Boom, 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 turn on. So it's an envelope, just like you'd expect. So it runs through this and it will turn, it can turn our envelope on and off and it can work. We have two of these for each frequency. We also can specify the width turning on and off over time. We can specify um, resonance, which we'll talk about in the resonance video. So... We've also got an octave and hertz relationship. So if we turn on our hertz mode, it will respond differently than our octave mode. So it is different. Um, it's more obvious with more complex filter shapes. Um, we can also create our own custom shapes here. So this is not the same as your hertz. You're not applying this. I mean, as your harmonics you're not applying this. it's just a filter shape so this is the representation of low end high end you could still think of it that way but it's more of how your shape is the shape that you're applying to your sound so this is maybe how they did some of these middle ones however i suspect that some of this may have just been special coding you see we're getting all sorts of funky things in the middle now because it's a filter shape again it's not um specific to all harmonic as you can see this is generally the bass so you could think of it like that because it is a filter we just added like a low uh or a high pass thing to our stuff we could add a high a low pass 
So that's an option you have. You have two of these that you can do that with. And you can create some pretty gnarly sounding things with that. Um, and amongst other things you have available, you also have, uh, there's a mask option somewhere in here. And mask is you can protect parts of your frequency from the filter movement. If that's something that like maybe you've got a piece of audio that you want filtered except for a specific part. And that's what the mask would be useful for. Um, I know it's in here. Anyways, frequency, frequency mix, phaser mask. Oh, very good. Frequency one. Oh, these are resonant masks. Oh, here we go. Filter one mask. So there's our shape and see our high pass is uh, being applied to everything. Well, we could mask out the upper end. And there, the upper end is coming through according to the shape we just drew in here. So this is how you can affect it on a per harmonic basis. However, this is not the same thing as the envelopes. That's again, another thing I'm like, what the heck is this modulation envelope thing up there doing? Maybe I'll find out later in this series as I learn more. So uh, besides that, uh, that is what, that's pretty much what all these things are. You have your octaves, your hertz, as we discussed. And then, okay, we have our routing. So this affects the way signal behaves as it goes through our unit here. So with the up, only filter one will come through. Only filter one affects our signal. So if you move filter two around, we get nada. But as you move filter one, so only filter one affects it. With it all the way down, only filter two. So that's why it's filter one and filter two at the tops. Um, affects it. So filter two is on custom shape, which is on nothing right now. So move it to classic high pass or low pass and filter one will not affect it. So the filter one, filter two, and then you see you have this equal sign and this plus signs. What is that reference to? Well, when you have it in the middle, you get what's called parallel processing. So if you're familiar with massive at all, this will be a familiar thing to you. Uh, parallel is it'll go through filter one and filter two at the same time. And they sort of, they sort of, they sort of share the job of processing and mixing those things together. All the way up is just filter one, and then if you come over here, you get uh, something weird. You get serial processing, like it's half parallel. I don't know really how to say this. So basically, let's say we've got some signal in our unison, and it's coming over here, going through our circuitry, and it reaches a point. And it says it only goes to filter one at this point. It does not go to filter two. In parallel processing, it would go and go, oh, filter one and filter two and be split evenly. And it would get sent through and then it'd be combined at the end or whatever. So unison goes through filter one only, right, on a serial. And then it goes out filter one, but then it also goes through filter two. So filter two receives filter one's signal and it goes out filter two. So it goes out filter one. And it goes, filtered signal goes out filter two. So I hope that made sense. Then, so if we play them, so filter two will only have this stuff to work with because filter one's already taken it. And so you can hear it working down there. But again, there's not that much effect that can go down there because they're both on low pass. So if you put this on a high pass, I guess it's still not that dramatic. But anyways, you get the idea. So... Then we come down to just the plus. This is serial. So now it comes out of uh, wherever, goes into our filter one, goes into filter two, and then goes out filter two. Nothing comes out of filter one. So it just goes in filter one, in, into filter two, and then out. And there are various reasons you might or might not want to do this. And so that is what the filter section is in Harmer. So we could just create a quick sound. Um, I feel like we already made quite a few sounds. But let's make a, sure, let's do that. And let's put that down and, uh, whoops, hold down control. And let's create a filter movement, create automation clip. So we're automating our filter cutoff. And let's go to our custom shape um, for filter one. And we'll do it in parallel. And we'll do our custom shape for filter two as well. And maybe we'll do something like this. And uh, so we're going to have a really wonky looking thing, right? All right. So uh, parallel is not the best idea. Let's just do filter one. Let's go to filter one. Custom shape for filter one. And let's do this. Plus, this was a pretty dramatic low end cut. So, so we got one of these things going on. And 
interesting. Oh, I'm messing around with filter shape two. I want filter shape one. Filter shape. Here it is, filter shape one. There we go. So hopefully you can see some applications here. You could do some uh, bass stuff. Oh yeah, put some distortion on that. Oh yeah, and we could even go down lower. No. Yeah, add more distortion. Let's do a log. We could randomize. All right, that might not have been the best move in the world, but we could go to harmonic randomness. That just looks funky. We got Illuminati stuff going on in here. So anyways, that's the filter movements. If you enjoy these videos, subscribe. Uh, like it if you like it. If you absolutely hate the fact that I don't know what the envelope thing does, um, then you could dislike this video, I guess, and tell your friends. Um, about that if you really feel so inclined uh, if you have any questions drop them in the comments uh, I am a student in school right now and we are covering psychoacoustics and things like that I could tell you why particular frequencies behave a certain way now and a whole bunch of other stuff they have us doing a ton of reading but it's mostly about like working in a studio recording live bands there's almost zero live synth stuff like there's like none of like absolutely none of this in there at all I, like we're using pro tools and all this stuff in pro tools and uh, there are there are things I would rather use Pro Tools for than FL because FL just straight can't do them. But there are things that FL does that I would like shoot myself over in Pro Tools. So it's really interesting, especially they have us learning all sorts of additional programs too, like DP, Digital Performer, which is what DP is, and Ableton Live. Uh, and I really dig Ableton. Ableton is freaking cool. So yeah, just really neat getting into all these other things and reading all these books and having experienced producers who have some of our instructors have won Grammys. Like it's, it's pretty gnarly. So yeah. So if you have any questions, I'll give you the best answer I got. And we can talk about that. They know some really technical stuff, but it's almost always to do with hardware stuff. So the software based stuff, is kind of interesting because they have all this knowledge about digital audio, but it's all towards like some of them know a great deal about synthesis, but it's like the focus of the curriculum. I don't know. It's really interesting going through going through the program. So if you have any questions, again, drop them in the comments. And have a blessed day.